Good morning. Welcome to the Catholic Church of St. Mark. Please take a moment to silence your cell phones, and as you do, let us rise as we start our celebration. something new for us, which is how we are to love each other, how we are to help each other to keep ourselves from wrongs, doing, and how we are to forgive each other, how we are to correct each other in love, and all these and things a bit of a challenge. So we have the scriptures for us to read, to reflect on, to help us as we apply this in our day-to-day -day activities. Therefore, as we come before our Lord and Father in preparing ourselves to hear these wonderful messages from him, let us go to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, through you, God has reconciled the world to himself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, <laughs> you've entrusted to us the message of reconciliation. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are a just and merciful judge. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us all our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. The children liturgy, sorry. So we invite all the children from ages four to seven to please come forward for their liturgy of the word. So hello. So today you are going to study something new. Eh? Every day you study something new. So you are going to see how if anybody make a mistake, then you should be able to correct the person, okay? And then if you also make a mistake, you must also accept to, um, to be corrected. Eh? And so we must love each other must also forgive each other, okay? So I pray the good Lord bless you and guide you. Um, may he be your strength.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandments there may be, are summed up in this one saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to eat, listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah.
So today's readings challenges us about sin, about how we are to help our brothers and sisters confront the sins they have in their lives, and about how we are to help them through a process of reconciliation. The Lord tells Ezekiel that it is your responsibility to speak out, to give the people warning. God will hold Ezekiel responsible, and of course, us, if uh, we do not fulfill our rule. But that was Ezekiel was a little bit probably more strict uh, because, you know, he had been called to a people, and God described the people that these people, they are rebellious people, number one. Number two, he tells Ezekiel that they will not even listen to you, but go and talk to them. You see, that is the kind of call that Ezekiel is supposed to, the prophet is supposed to go and talk to, God, uh, to the people. So, but God says that you go so that at least they will know that there have been a prophet amongst them. You see, um, I must, you must agree uh, that the background will be different from our current background anyway. But the fact that we should be able to correct ourselves, forgive each other, and love each other so that we don't see, uh, you see someone going the wrong way, you, ju you just don't want to see the person go and then ditch him or herself. So we need to bring each other on board so that we can move as a family of God, not only in this community, wherever we find ourselves. So that is so important. But that is for Ezekiel. It was very challenging, very, very. And even now, it's not so easy to seek to correct ourselves when we make uh, mistakes. And sometimes if you, you are fond of correcting people, it's very good, good, good behavior. But you must also be ready to be corrected. So it's a two-way affair. That is where we must always be aware. Beloved in Christ, as Christians and ministers of the word of God, through the promise that we have made to God and the church when we were baptized, we have a responsibility and we are obligated to warn the wicked to turn away from their sinful ways so they may be saved from spiritual death. So that is the most important part. We are, we are helping saving each other. Yet we are not to be a watchman out of arrogance or self-righteousness. We do not do this out of a desire to make ourselves look good or to boast like the Pharisee the Pharisees did. We are to do so out of love and compassion. St. Paul tells us that we are to owe nothing to our neighbor, but we do what we do owe them is love. Love that is at the heart of our faith is to motivate us, just as it was the foundation of Jesus' ministry and his proclamation of God's kingdom. So as parents, it's hard at times, but we, we can't say we have given up on him or on her. Even when people don't listen, even when the kids don't listen, even where the adults, the adults means when you have your, I mean, your children who are now adults, don't even listen. We have to still keep them in mind keep correcting them or keep praying for them. We don't give up on people. You see, as Christians, I think our challenge is much broader and bigger, and we want to look at that. This theme resonates with the concept of conversion as it invites us to examine our hearts, admit wrongdoing, and seek reconciliation. Confronting the existence of sin in our world helping our brothers and sisters face their sins and overcome sin in their lives. These are topics that we normally don't want to address. So why the specific context of today's gospel 
is the discussion of fraternal correction in the Christian community. Firstly, privately admonishing the erring believer, then with one or two others before bringing him before the church. And if he's still unrepentant, treating him as a tax collector. The message aligns with the idea of forgiving those who have wronged us, promoting forgiveness as a way to overcome animosity. Beloved, Jesus doesn't shy away from the reality of disagreement in the church. He acknowledges the presence of conflict and mistakes and offers a practical approach to manage them. Crucially, the passage concludes with a message of assurance. Jesus is present within the community, guiding his actions. Decisions rooted in prayer are backed by divine support. What is agreed on earth reflects in heaven, and where people gather in Jesus' name, he is present. Through his teaching, a framework for addressing disputes is established with an underlying message of unity and divine guidance. So this is because a community is a place where believers connect with each other on a soul level, and in doing so, spur each other on to a deeper relationship with God. This interconnectedness has its foundation in the very nature of God, the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit eternally subsist as one God in three persons, forever relating and loving one another. In creating us in his image, God has put this communal need in the soul of every person. So we have to support each other, along with the power to holiness, and help each other overcome our sinfulness. So that is why owing each other this love is a fulfillment of the law. But beloved, it's easier said, and as I've said it, but it is tough in practicing it. Very, very difficult. But if we can move forward with this, we have to accept the difficulty of it so that we commend that in prayer and then we can now help each other. I have seen a mom trying to correct a baby who was breastfeeding eh? because the mom breast was hurting. So he didn't even hit the baby, just took the baby off, stopped her from breastfeeding for a moment and then just to, uh, mothers, you know what I'm talking about. And then it's tough. The baby was angry. He didn't want to take the breast milk anymore. He was biting the, the mom. Well, I didn't do that when I was a young boy. I didn't do that, yeah. <laughs> How do you know, you see? But that is the point, even a baby. So correcting is very difficult, very, very difficult. Or taking corrections, oh boy, it's very, it's tough. But then one day after mass, I was touched by a lady who came to see me uh, some about some four years ago. She said, Father, can I see you for a minute? So why not? Then we sat down in the office for that particular minute. After two hours, we were still sitting there. <laughs> because, and I was touched by what she was saying. She wasn't saying anything so special, not because uh, she was saying so many things. She was just going around, repeating herself, saying that when she was a young girl or a teenager, she thought that she wished that she had listened to her parents or she wished the parents would have been a little more authoritative on her so that so many mistakes that she did before, she wouldn't have done it. She looks back at them and said, no, I wish I, did, I never did it. But because at that time, your parents will advise you all right, but you won't take it. So when they say one, they won't even say two. They leave you alone because you are also an adult. 
You have your own life. See, that was her biggest worry. A lady was, was kind of around, around 70, there about years of age. She was looking back and said, no. In life, we need each other. Sometimes a little bit of, for us, the young, uh, who are growing, even when we are adults, we still have some adults there who still have to direct us and we have to accept each other. Sometimes we need a little bit of guidance, but a little amount of control. This is what she was saying, and that has kept us for two hours, and she thought that if that was in her life, or rather if she has allowed that to be in her life, so many mistakes that she made wouldn't have happened. And that is what we find ourselves. So I became so touched about that. So we want to uh, pray more about this situation and try and help each other. It's not easy, but we, bit by bit we have to uh, also encourage ourselves. One thing I find here most is that, you know, even in the church only, but it's everywhere in our world. Some people are, do very well. Even when you have made a mistake, they don't let it sound that you have made a mistake. I mean, you, you know what I'm talking about. It's a very Christian attitude, but many people do that, not necessarily Christians. Everybody does that. And I wish we continue that behavior. You may have made a mistake. He's about to correct you, but he's already saying, oh, I'm sorry. Can you do this and that, you see? And then you are not even aware that you made a mistake. And then when, when you correct yourself, now you say, oh, this person was nice. I think these are some good ways we can impart on society and help encourage each other. It's not all that easy, but I know with God's grace, you will continue. And above all, praying for each other is the best. How do you go about it when, as a grandmother, you are nine-year-old grandson, look at your face. Somebody you took, you took the church to be baptized. And look at your face, she doesn't want to talk to you. Why? Because you went for mass on Sunday. She doesn't believe in, in the God you are worshiping anymore. So she's just angry with you because you are returning home from mass, from church service. You don't want to talk to her. She believes in something I don't respect that, and so on and so forth. Are you going to pray for her? You have to. Are you going to pray for your grandson? You have to. You see, so we, we, we don't eventually we don't have to give up on each other. I tell you, the process Jesus gave in the gospel of today will never come to that particular end where you are supposed to treat somebody as a tax collector or a gentile. It will never come there. Jesus gave that to them because that was their kind of understanding and their kind of culture. So he put that, behavior, uh, that part, uh, the last of his story to them, that if the person doesn't listen, treat him as a tax collector. It's not going to be possible. Because St. Paul will end it by saying that we owe each and every one love. By the time you start talking with a person, it may end there. By the time you bring two or three, it has so many things that goes along with it that it will not eventually get there. So Jesus actually doesn't want us to treat anybody as a task collector and so on and so forth. So these are just meant for us as a guide. Beloved, we pray that the good Lord strengthen us. Don't forget to pray for each other. Let us be there for each other. Let us always have our smiling faces, even when things are difficult. Let us spare each other on. And that is the journey to the kingdom of God. May the Lord bless us all. Amen. Shall we please rise and profess our faith in God? I believe in one God.
Let us come before our Lord and Father and present our petition. For the Holy Church of God, that through the efforts of Pope Francis, along with our bishops and our pastors, that we will continue to preach the gospel of God's reconciling love, we pray. As we celebrate Patriots Day tomorrow, for our country's leaders and for the leaders of all nations, that they may work together to address the problems that pro provide fertile ground for the growth of gun violence, terrorism, and conflict, we pray. Lord, for all victims of violence and conflict around the world, for their families and for affected children, that they may find comfort and peace, we pray. Lord, for the safety of our servicemen and women abroad, for civil servants who protect us and keep us safe and for all those who live with war and violence, we pray. For families, for parents, and for grandparents on this national day for grandparents, especially those grandparents who provide daily care for grandchildren, and for those for whom distance and circumstances do not allow them to see their grandchildren as often as they would like, we pray. Lord, for those whom we are especially concerned, for those we love, for those in our parish book of intercessions, that they may know the healing touch of Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, for those who have died, especially those we remember this weekend, Salome Donato, that they may soon gather at the banquet feast of heaven. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Concerning love, hear the prayers of your faithful people as we listen to your voice. Inspire us to be people of reconciliation. Keep us ever close to you in this assembly of faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Christ, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Lord Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice at your hands for the praise of the Lord in his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty. And by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. <laughs> we pray by sending down your spirit upon every the dew fall so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, you are church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Barry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
remember your servant Salome the Nato, who we have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with blessed apostles, St. Mark, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and I is yours forever and ever. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign.
presence of our God. As we gather here in Christ, fear the Spirit, breathe upon us the breath of life, grace, and divine. We have come to break the bread. We have come to share our lives. Let us bring these fruits to the table. Justice that is shown, we will build our kingdom together. The love of Christ given to all. On God, a one in Christ, on God, a Scattered yet being made whole, 
by our Redeemer, one Lord and one Savior, the Shepherd who gathers a soul, gathers a soul. We are many, yet we are one. We are separate, yet bound in His love. And together we are all His hands and His feet, bringing mercy and peace to this world. We are many and one. We are different as morning and evening, each of us living as we have been called, all of us seeking, each of us reaching to heaven, that gathers a soul, gathers a soul. We are many, yet we are one. We are separate, yet bound in His love. And together we all his hands and his feet, bringing mercy and peace to this world. We are many and one. We are brothers and sisters of spirit, found all nations yet near to the Lord, each one belonging. Together now longing for Gafford who gathers a soul, gathers a soul. We are many, yet we are one. We are separate, yet bound in His love. And together we are all His hands and His feet, bringing mercy and peace to this world. Grant that you are faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we might merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Just a few announcements we have. Our parish office is back on our normal uh, office hour so we'll be open today from uh, 9 to 1 and then Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
For this coming week, our daily mass uh, schedule remains the same, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8.30 in the morning, and then Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. with a 6.30 rosary prior. Religious formation registration closes out today. And so if you have not registered your child yet, please do so. You can either go on our parish website, there's paper copies in the commons, or you can go back to the formation office, and that's for grades one through 12. Next week, formation begins with uh, cookies with a catechist that'll be next Sunday in the Great Hall from 12 to 1 p.m. Our youth group kicks off this Sunday evening for grades six through 12, and that'll start from six to 8 p.m. tonight. Our Justice and Peace Committee, along with our Knights, are hosting a blood drive, and we have two spots left. If you'd like to go ahead and donate blood, which is urgently needed, that will be on September 19th from 12 to 5 p.m. Signups are beginning this weekend in the Commons. If you've seen it in our uh, the most recent uh, Catholic Virginian, the bishop will lead a pilgrimage to the Basilica in D.C. and St. Mark has coordinated a bus. So if you'd like to do that, it'll be on October 21st, which is a Saturday, and that'll be $40 a person. Sign up at the table right next to the TV in the Commons. Our own parish Eucharistic revival will begin next Sunday as we explore the Mass guided by Bishop Barron. So we have about five or six small faith groups. If you'd like to sign up, there's one that will start next Sunday and then it goes Tuesday, Thursday, <coughs> excuse me. And those signups are, are there as well. We do have a roof update. We had our pre-construction meeting with our roof company and the oversight company reps this last Wednesday. Equipment and materials will begin to arrive this coming week and will occupy the space between where the staff parking lot is in the back of the church from those staff parking areas all the way to where the trailer is. You've already probably seen that it's been moved. So if you normally park there, we recommend that you may think about parking next door and coming through the daily chapel. But we're making progress, and we hope to have the, uh, the work on the roof start fairly soon. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. So we thank you very much uh, for coming back, most importantly for the contribution for the roof. Uh, uh, so far, I think we have moved on. We still encourage ourselves anyway, but we thank you very much. Uh, it has really helped us. And so let's pray for a successful um, work to be done. Shall you please rise? Yeah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Children, don't you get weary? Work 
Work together, children, don't you get weary. Work together, children, don't you get weary. We will walk for justice in this great land. We will walk. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. We will walk for justice in this great land. We will walk and never tire. We will walk and never tire. We will walk. In this great land, walk for justice in this great land.